Hello friends, welcome back to Stories with Pastor Macy. I've got Wesley here with me. He's been having a meltdown, so hopefully we will get through this without any crying. We have a story today, which is an old favorite called Corduroy. I hope you uh, are having a wonderful Tuesday. Let's read Corduroy by Don Freeman. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in a toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for someone to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and look straight in Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, mommy, she said, look, there's the fairy bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button from one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight, I'll go see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began to search the floor for his lost button. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. <gasps> Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor and there before his eyes was the most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of bed. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And he crawled up onto a large, thick mattress. All at once. He saw something small and round. Why, there's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up. But just like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled with both paws until pop, off came the button, and off the mattress corduroy toppled. Bang, into a tall floor lamp, over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going on his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now who in the world did that? He said, someone must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the covers. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up the next morning when the first customers came into the store. And there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same little girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night, I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank. And my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa said. And she carried Corduroy home in her arm. 
She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like the enormous palace in the department store. Either. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. I think this is a wonderful story. C.S. Lewis uh, writes that if we have a longing for something deep in our souls, it must be because something to fulfill that longing exists. And uh, just like Corduroy longed for a home and a friend, even more than a palace or climbing a mountain, he wanted a home, a place where he belonged, and a friend who knew his name and would take care of him. And in our lives, uh, there are times when we have a longing for something. I remember as a little girl sitting uh, next to my bed and thinking, I just want to go home. But I was home in, in my room next to my bed. And I think that as adults, we feel that sometimes too, that we have a longing for something more than this world with its pain and uh, bad things. We have a longing to be with Jesus in heaven. And we have a longing for someone to call a friend. And Jesus has provided us uh, a way to be in heaven with him through his death on the cross and through his friendship with us. And so if we have a longing for something deep in our souls, there must be something to fill that. And the answer for us is Jesus, just as the answer for Corduroy was a little girl with a bright smile named Lisa. I hope that you continue to have a wonderful Tuesday, and we'll see you again soon for more stories with Pastor Macy. Bye.